What's going on everybody? Leo Hegeman here from Red Giant and today I'm going to walk you through our contact lens kit. It's a free project file with a hundred different eyes referencing characters from some of our favorite movies. We've got some good guys, we've got some bad guys, we've got some just weird stuff. We think you're going to like it. To open the project file, you'll need After Effects 2019 and a few of the tools from our Magic Bullet suite and a few tools from our Visual Effects suite. Be sure to check the description for a table of contents and quick links to each section. So the first thing you're probably going to want to do is have a look at the gallery, and you can do that by unzipping the file and dragging the HTML file to your browser. Or you could purchase a copy of the totally awesome AE Viewer plugin. It lets you create previews of your After Effects project files, and it also lets you preview all sorts of other things, like presets, audio and video files, and even Cinema 4D files. All right, I have AE Viewer installed, and I've exported all the comps as separate project files. You've got a hundred different eyes to choose from. I definitely went a little overboard. There's some really thinly veiled movie references. Some of the options are looping animations and some are static. We're gonna choose one to get started with. I think we're gonna pick The Witcher. This project file was set up in After Effects 2019 with a new feature called Master Properties. Now if you haven't seen it, you should check out this excellent tutorial from Harry Frank. Harry is a wizard. I recognized you immediately by your eyes. Master Properties let you save parameters to your Essential Graphics panel. And then when you create a new comp, the Master Properties carry over. Now we can change any of the settings from the nested composition in our parent composition. So we've got a whole bunch of controls in case you want to get in here and spice things up. Spice. 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 Well, that's a little too much spice. Let's go over all the options. First, we have the eye selector. We're not going to change this since we've already picked the one we want, but we could switch things up and pick a number anywhere from 1 to 100. Scale controls the size of both eyes. Blur lets you match the focus of the subject. Expand and contract is just a bulge effect on the entire eye. You can change the opacity and exposure to blend with your own footage. If you want your eyes to mirror each other, you can turn this setting on. Some eyes have pupil layers that can be adjusted independently. You can turn off the left or right eye if you need to. Next, we've got 3D rotation controls. And then below that, you can adjust the catch light. You can also change the hue and saturation of the iris. There's also an iris vignette to give it a little bit of 3D shading and you can adjust the size of the vignette. In some cases, you might want to mask the iris, and that's what this is for. And at the very bottom, we have a couple of glow parameters using our optical glow plugin from the Visual Effects Suite. All right, let's see, have we covered all the master properties? Yes, master. Ah, oh, cool, cool, cool. Now, who should we call about getting some monster footage? We're the Monster Squad. You know, as a kid, I was a big fan of the Monster Squad, and I only learned later in life that it was because of the work of Stan Winston and his team of effects artists. They've really pushed the boundaries for special effects makeup and uh, puppeteering. But you know, who needs Stan Winston when we've got Marta Svetek? Marta volunteered to be our one-woman Monster Squad. Her makeup artist, Brigitte Smart, did an incredible job transforming her into five different characters. Her DP, Andrew Rogers, shot all this amazing footage for us to work with. This cosplay marathon took them about 12 hours to complete. Just want to give a big shout out to Marta and her team in London. So I'm going to get started with this shot of Marta as the Witcher. We're going to create a comp from the clip. We'll open the master comp and drag a copy of our footage below the existing plate. Just the heads up that you can extend all of the layers in the master comp to match the length of your own clip. You'll notice if you open any of the layers that we have time remapping enabled and we have each of them set to loop. 
Next we'll key out the green screen by dragging a copy of Primat Keyer onto the clip and pressing the magic button. And most of the work is done, but we'll go ahead and clean up the background selection a little bit and clean up the foreground and then enable Spill Killer to get rid of the green halo. Okay, next up we're going to drag a copy of Spot Clone Tracker onto our footage. Spot Clone Tracker is part of our new set of tools from the Visual Effects Suite. If you've ever done any sort of clone work at all, you'll realize how powerful this thing can be. We're going to use it to track or remove this tracking marker. By default the spots will move in sync with each other, but we can change the clone from point from offset to explicitly so that the clone texture doesn't shift. You can also stack copies of Spot Clone, which comes in really handy for cleanup work. Now that we've gone over how to use Spot Clone Tracker for cleanup, let's use it for something it wasn't intended for. Hey, Frisbee, far out. We're gonna use Spot Clone to track her eyes, but before we do, let's go over all your options. You could use the native face tracker in After Effects, but I found that the tracking is a little shaky. And you could also use the default motion tracker. It's a little bit more dependable, but it drifts a little too. Spot Clone Tracker was obviously designed for cleanup work, but it does an incredible job tracking eyes. We'll drag a copy onto the clip and focus on tracking the right eye first. And then we'll set the opacity to zero since we only need the tracking data. And we'll adjust the scale, line it up, and start the track. I've added a curves adjustment just to see a little bit better. And now we'll set the clone from point to explicitly line it up and track it. Spot clone obviously won't be able to track during a blink, so you can just position the spot manually for those frames. Now that we have our tracking data, we'll unsolo our clip and then hide the old plate layer. And now we'll open the essential graphics panel and change the scale of the eyes. Next, we'll select the right eye layer and change its position by holding down shift and using the arrow keys. All right, now we'll select the following layers and turn off their parenting. Don't worry about it, we'll turn the parenting back on later. For now, we're going to open the null tracking layers and link each of them to their respective spot clone to and from locations. Now we'll select all the same layers and turn the parenting back on. Now you'll notice the eyes track with the clip. Now we'll open up the matte layers that we're using to mask the eyes and we'll delete all the pre-existing keyframes. Then you'll position the playhead at the start or end of your clip and keyframe any changes to the size and shape. Be sure to grab the pan behind tool and move the anchor point to the bottom of the shape before you start keyframing. That'll make it easier for you when you're trying to scale the eye open and closed. So the last step for the eyes is to jump back to the parent composition and keyframe any changes to the eye rotation. All right, now that we have the eyes finished, we just need a plate. We could use video, but in this case, our clip is so short that we could probably get away with a photo. So we'll jump over to unsplash.com and search for something with swamp and fog in it. Unsplash has an amazing collection of photographs that you can use free in your work. Just be sure to give them credit. That's looking pretty good. Now that we have the plate added, we'll download some fog from actionvfx.com. Next, we're going to bring all of our layers into SuperComp, which is the flagship product from our new Visual Effects Suite. If you haven't already, you should definitely check out this amazing tutorial from Stu Mashowitz. Stu's the mad scientist that brought SuperComp to life. Oh, it's alive! It's alive! It's alive! It's alive! 
We'll start things off by adding a color adjustment to the fog and then we'll add a couple of instances of light wrap to Marta. We'll add a little bit of haze, some blur behind, and an edge blend. And then we'll add one more color adjustment just to tie the color together. Next up, we need to change our hair color. And to do that, we're gonna jump back into the master comp. We'll create a white solid, we'll do a quick mask. We'll feather it a bit and keyframe for any changes in position and then we'll set the blending mode to color. Now she can get those sweet senior discounts. Next up, we'll create an adjustment layer. We'll add a copy of Magic Bullet Looks. I've imported some LUTs from the Triune store. I'm gonna go ahead and pick this one. We'll add some Renoiser from the Magic Bullet suite for some film grain. And then to get the handheld look, we'll add a copy of Universe Camera Shake. All right, let's have a look at the final. Drum roll, please. That's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you make anything with our project file, please share it with us on Twitter at Red Giant News. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.